Welcome back, all of my future chemists. So we just learned previously that it's all about attraction. So let's highlight where there is the most attraction in the periodic table. The most attractive element is fluorine. The least attractive element is francium. Now I told you it was, you know, up and to the right. Why would the noble gases not be attractive? Why don't I consider the noble gases? So if you thought, well, it's because they don't want to react. You're correct. They have a full valence shell. So they have a full valence shell. They don't want any more electrons. They don't want to lose any electrons. So they don't want to react at all. So don't want to gain or to lose electrons. So they're pretty much, they're not going to be involved. They don't want to be involved in any of this. Um, so that gives us fluorine as the most attractive. So attraction is increasing this way. And attraction is also increasing up because here the electrons are so far away. So high attraction from left to right and high attraction um, in the top corner. So question, what has the greater attraction, lithium or boron? So let's compare those two. Um, here is lithium right here. And here is boron right here. Well, they're both in the same row, the same vertical or horizontal row. Which one's further to the right? Boron. So why is boron the more attractive one? Well, it is further right. There is more attraction. And that means there are, really, there's more protons to pull on that second level, the second energy level of the electron cloud. Now let's take a look at another one. Let's look at magnesium and barium. So here is magnesium and here is barium. This time they're in the same vertical column, the same family. Magnesium's higher up, barium's lower down. So which one has greater attraction? Look at our key. It's gonna be magnesium. And why this time? Our reasoning is it's higher up so that the electrons are closer to the nucleus. And now let's look at um, let's look at phosphorus or strontium. So here is phosphorus and here is strontium. Well, wow, okay, they're not in the same row, they're not in the same column, but let's take a look. Phosphorus, further to the right, and phosphorus is further up. So both of those things mean that's going to be more attractive. Now, what if these rules ever conflicted? Um, I probably won't do that to you on the test. Um, if they ever do conflict, there should be one where it's quite clear, you know, it's much further up or it's much further to the right. So phosphorus, because it is further to the right, and it's further up. So um, first thing, there are less electron shells. So therefore, the electrons are closer, closer to the nucleus. And it's also further to the right. That means that in general, there's a higher ratio of the protons to the valence electrons. There's going to be a stronger pull. Now, I know there aren't technically more protons because strontium is so much lower, but here's our real reason. Now, let's look at atomic radii. Here is a chart of atomic radii. I basically took the D and F blocks out. So here's column one, column two, column three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or 13 through 18. Let's look. What trend do you see? Where are the largest atoms located? If you said down to the left, you are correct. So here are my largest atoms. And where are my smallest atoms? Up here, here are my smallest. So looking at the trend of atomic radii, going down a group, size increases. And going to the left, size increases. Take a look at our previous. That is exactly opposite of the attraction example. And that should make some good sense to you. If there's a high attraction between the electron cloud and the protons, the, or between the protons and the nucleus, the nucleus is going to pull in that electron cloud like it's getting a big hug, and it's going to shrink it closer to the nucleus. So low attraction, there is room, there is opportunity for the electron cloud to kind of spread out. And as I go down each energy level, principal quantum numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I am adding a new energy level. Kind of if you think back to the Bohr model, I've got to add another ring. Each time I add another ring, the electrons are getting further and further and further away from the nucleus. So here are our largest atoms, here are our smallest. So in general, as you go across a period, the atomic radii, they decrease, they go down. And it's because attraction is going up. So when there's that high attraction, the electron cloud gets pulled in and the attraction is going up. 
because the number of protons is also going up. As you go down a group though, the atomic radii increases, it goes up, because I'm adding, I'm adding electron shells. Or you could say energy levels. Um, really means the same thing. We're talking about that principal quantum number. So we're adding like layers to the onion, basically. So let's try and apply what we've learned to that. Um, let's look at a chart here. What element has an atomic radii close to 200 picometers? So let's really try and zoom in. Here's 200. Let's go all the way across. What element is closest to 200 picometers? I would definitely say what well, looks like it's the most. Sodium? Um, yeah, it looks like sodium is going to be the closest to our 200 picometer line. Well, if we keep looking, what's right here? It's either going to be sodium or it could be atomic number 20. Check your periodic table. Atomic number 20 is calcium. So I'm going to say either sodium or calcium. It's kind of, kind of a toss-up. It's hard to see this chart being so small. Let's look as we go across a period. So look at our chart here. Atomic number is going on the x-axis. and Atomic radius is going up on the y-axis. Across a period, that's a horizontal row. So here's, let's look at period two. As I go across period two, my atomic radius is decreasing. As I go across period three, the atomic radius is decreasing. Period four, generally decreases. There's a few little blips right here. And period five, it's decreasing. So in general, we could say, as you go across a period, atomic radii go down. And think that, why wasn't it? Atomic radii go down because attraction is going up. We're staying in that same electron shell or energy level, but we're adding more protons, so attraction's gonna go up. Next one, as you go down a group, the atomic radii do what? So let's, let's figure out what a group is. Um, let's look at our, let's say our, um, our alkali metals. Lithium's an alkali metal, sodium's an alkali metal, so is potassium, um, rubidium, and cesium. So if we look at our periodic table, I'm looking at lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and we left off France in here, but that's okay. So what is happening to the size? Going from lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. The atomic radii is going up. And why is that? That's because I'm adding, I'm adding more electron shells. So the lower you go on the periodic table, the more layers there are on your atomic onion. So here's an analysis question to think about. Will barium, atomic number 56, be greater or smaller than cesium? Let's check our periodic table. Barium is right here. Cesium is right here. So they're in different columns with the same row. Which one's further to the right? Barium. Barium has more protons. That means more attraction. That means the, pro the nucleus will pull in that electron cloud closer and shrink the size of the atom. So will barium be greater or smaller? So barium is going to be smaller because there are more protons, and that means greater or more attraction. Okay, next question to look at. Will francium, number 87, be greater or smaller than cesium? Let's check it on our periodic table. Cesium, francium, same column. Francium's lower. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Cesium has six electron shells. Francium has seven. So which one has to be bigger? You're right. It's going to be francium. So francium is going to be greater. It's going to be bigger because it has more electron shells or more energy levels. If we want to visualize it, francium is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be like what francium would look like. And then cesium, I'm going to kind of exaggerate this. So here's cesium. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know that's not the scale, but you kind of get the idea, right? Different numbers of rings. Sorry, that was a horrible drawing. Pretend it was better, please. So let's summarize atomic radii. What do we need to know? So let's apply our rules. So where are the largest atoms? Down. Oops, that was a terrible arrow. Largest atoms are down and to the left. So down and to the left. So here's our largest atom. And then here I have our really, really small atoms up top. So let's compare some of these and pick. So which one is bigger, lithium or boron? So here's lithium, here's boron. Same row. So up and down doesn't matter which one is further left, lithium. So 
lithium is going to be bigger, it's further left, and that means that there is less attraction. So the proton isn't going to be pulling in on those electron clouds nearly as much. So electron clouds can kind of expand and be larger. Then we've got magnesium and barium. So let's check out magnesium. Magnesium is right here. Barium is right here. They're in the same column, the same family. Which one is lower down? Barium is lower down. So what that means is that barium is going to be larger because it has more electron shells. So there's more layers. And also, there is also less attraction too. So those outermost electrons are going to be really far away and they're going to be shielded from the nucleus. And let's try one more example. Let's look at phosphorus or strontium. Here's phosphorus and here is strontium. So this time they're not in the same row or same column. Strontium is further down and it's further to the left. So it has less attraction basically two different ways. So which one has to be bigger? Strontium. Strontium will be much larger because I'm going to say, well, basically it's lower and it's to the left. So there's less attraction. And there are also more electron shells. Okay. Good. So that was, sorry, it's a little scribbly up there. So this one, barium was further down. That was for left. Now we got left and down at the same time. So questions. Which atom in each pair has the largest atomic radius and give a brief explanation why? I want you to try these next eight on your own using the rules I just taught you, and then you're going to check back after you pause the video and actually work through these and tell me why. Make sure you use like left, right, up, down, and you know less attraction, more attraction, more shells, less shells. So pause the video, please. Try these next eight problems. Okay, now that you've paused the video and tried these all on your own, let's look through the examples. So with lithium and potassium, potassium is bigger because it's further down, it has more shells. Less attraction, more shells, bigger atom. Calcium or nickel? Calcium is further left than nickel, so calcium has less attraction, therefore the electron cloud can expand and it's larger. Gallium or boron? Gallium is lower in the periodic table, there are more energy levels, so it is larger. Oxygen or carbon? Carbon is really close to oxygen, but it's two more to the left, so a few less protons, less attraction, that electron cloud isn't pulled in as tightly, so the atom can expand and be larger. Number five, chlorine or bromine? Bromine is larger, it's lower down the periodic table, more electron shells, bigger onion, bigger atom. But really more barium. Barium is down a lot further, a lot more energy levels, much bigger atom. Seven, silicon or sulfur? Silicon, it's further to the left, less attraction between the electrons and the nucleus. And then iron or gold. Gold is lower down, also a little bit to the right, but here being two rows lower and having two more energy levels is much more important than the couple of spots it is further to the right. So gold will be a much larger atom than iron because it's two more rows down. I'll give you um, clear examples on like that for a test. You know, if you're adding two or three layers of extra electron shells, that will definitely win out over, you know, being a few columns left or right of each other. We can talk more about that in class. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to stop here. We're going to look at what happens next when I change the size of the atom by adding or removing electrons to make the atom into an ion and make it more stable.